Why did Deshaun Watson only win four games in 2020? And the reason I ask is he's supposed to be the best quarterback in the league or up there. Like there's nothing he can't do. And I, I agree that he's extremely good. But I also feel like if you put Russell Wilson on the Texans this year, they win nine games. And if you put Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady on that team, they win nine games because they're the elite of the elite. And for Watson to be in the elite, the elite, I would expect him to get at least eight. I mean, he had J.J. Watt. So anyway, I don't watch the Texans that much. I catch him on red zone and stuff. So Vish, explain to me how this dude went four and 12 this year. Okay, so I, I I disagree with I, – I agree with that mindset, right? I don't think wins are a quarterback stat, stat, but for the most part, the top guys, you know, the Tom Brady's, the Aaron Rodgers, the Peyton Manning's, the ben, Big Ben Roethlisberger's, the Russell Wilson's, they're in the playoffs every year, and oftentimes yeah. it's because even – it's in spite of a lot of turmoil in their roster, a lot of guys missing in a lot of spots, but they huh. overcome it because they're that good, okay? Yeah. And that's what so, they're paid to do. I mean, you're paid right. to overcome so that. Kind I of agree. Stuff. I think that's applicable in Deshaun for De, in Deshaun Watson's case, and I think he would win nine games with the Houston Texans next year if they re-sign Will Fuller and get a couple pieces on defense. But I don't think it applies to this year. And the reason I don't think it applies to this year is because what happened to the Texans this year was just brutal. So their first yes. seven games, they played five playoff teams out of their seven. Okay, so usually. Usually these types of teams, right, they win the games they're supposed to win. That's why they win 10 games. That's why yeah. Russell Wilson wins 10 games in spite of the roster. Well, they started off, right, the, this was a Houston Texans starting schedule. You went to Kansas City, scheduled loss, they're coming off the Super Bowl. Then you had Baltimore, who had arguably the best roster in the NFL. That's what people thought in the preseason. Then you had Pittsburgh, who was flying high. Then you played Minnesota, who was desperate, and they kind of lost in a shootout-type game. They whooped Jacksonville, and they ultimately lost to the, at the time, I think, 5-1 and one Tennessee Titans or 5-0 and oh Tennessee Titans. So they basically ended their season before it started. And what happens with aging veteran teams is, even when you have Deshaun Watson, I mean, you're talking about guys who are 30, 31. They got to think about their next job. They start making business decisions. They're not going to be like the 2017, 2018 Niners where you're throwing out a bunch of undrafted dudes who are just happy to play and they're going to go play their butts off. The Houston Texans fired their coach. They had a lot of changes in the roster. They had all of these problems and they started off horribly where their season was done before it started. And I think that's why they went 4-12. and 12. I think if you hire a competent coach, let's say they hire Brian Dayball. Let's say Deshaun Watson gets appeased and he stays there. Let's say they re-sign Will Fuller, maybe bring in a couple of defensive pieces. They're not going to be a contender because the roster won't be good enough, but I have no doubt that they would go 9-7. Okay. Okay. I just feel like well, let's break him down like this. I mean, he plays his playing style. I know he's become more of a pocket quarterback. He used to run around a lot. He does fumble a lot. I, I'm just like for a, a quarterback who's elite, it seems like he has holes in his game that maybe Russell Wilson doesn't have. Uh, he he fumbles. He I, I, I don't think you can totally absolve him of all the blame. I think he had a hand in this in this team being what it is. You can't just say. He's great. But real quick, hold on. Let me let me, let me compare him to Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott before this season had never had a losing season. And people were like, yeah, but he was 8-8 eight and eight last year. like, And he was cheap. You make him the, like, the highest paid quarterback in the league, why would you expect to win when you went only 8-8 eight and eight with him when he was cheap? Watson was cheap this year. Watson will be cheap next year. His extension kicks in in 2022. So to me, I mean, it seems like you could use the same logic against him and be like, hey, man, like – Say what you want, but uh, why do we think that he's necessarily going to be this playoff lock every year making 40 when he was, when he was, I mean, wasn't a playoff lock making 10? So he was though, right? He made it, he, they would have, I mean, his rookie season, they went from being a playoff team with him, 19 touchdowns, five interceptions in five games. And then they fell off and gave, I think, who, who did they trade with at the time? Was it the Cincinnati Bengals? They gave the Cincinnati Bengals a top five pick, I want to say. Mm -hmm. They gave somebody yeah. a top five pick. I don't think it was Cincinnati. Someone please mention in the yeah. comment section. Whoever they traded the next first round pick to for Deshaun Watson, they gave them a top five pick. And then his next year, they made the playoffs. His second year, they made the playoffs his third year. So That's it's true. not he's not been that kind of guy. In Dak Prescott's case, the pe reason people said that is because at the time of Dak Prescott being drafted, though he's been an excellent quarterback, a top 
10 type quarterback his entire career, especially the last two years. His problem was they had Zeke Elliott. They had three Hall of Fame offensive linemen. They went and traded for Amari Cooper. And at the time, they had the best defense in the NFC West. And people said, yeah, Dak, you have every single thing. The offense, like Jason Garrett isn't great, but he isn't horrible. It's not like the worst play calling. It's okay. Well, I mean, he's no better than Bill O'Brien. Sure. Right. It's not. Okay. It's not. Okay. It's not good okay. play calling. Yeah, it's, yeah, fine. Yeah. it's fine. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. they do something. It's okay. Weird. Yeah. It's generic. It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. And yeah. so everybody looked at, and he was in Dallas, so it got a little extra hype and all of that, and it was that worked against Dak Prescott. Those are both bad organizations. Man. Yeah. Ultimately, in Dallas. Yeah. Ultimately, I think that's what Dak Prescott's problem was. I think he was actually well on his way to a losing season this year because Tyron Smith got hurt early. He was two and three. He was two and three. And that coaching staff is just right. Yeah. They, yeah, they had a right. bad coaching staff. Their defense was horrible. They were yeah. starting undrafted offensive linemen. So it was that Zeke Elliott has clearly lost all his type of explosiveness. He wasn't pass even pass blocking well, which used to be what he was best at. Right. And, and, and he's Mike, fumbling. Right. He's fumbling. So you yeah. had Dak, Amari Cooper, CD Lamb, and Michael Gallup. That was going to be their entire offense, basically. And I think Dak Prescott was well on his way to having a great statistical season. That ultimately led it to them, the Dallas Cowboys going six and ten. So if you're I a one-dimensional you know, offense with shaky pass protection, your quarterback's gonna get hurt in the NFL. And you just hope that it's not as gruesome as it was with Dak, and it was very gruesome. So they put him in a bad situation. I guess it's it's just you know, being so invested in Zeke Elliott. He's old now in football right. years. 